So, in my apartment building, there's this elevator with a button marked, to nowhere. It might as well have been a red button with a sign saying, do not press. You know how it goes, right? The more you're told not to do something, the more you want to do it. The forbidden fruit syndrome, if you will. So, naturally, I was as drawn to it as a moth to a flame, or a kid to a candy store, or a millennial to avocado toast. You get the idea. I mean, who wouldn't be curious about a button that promises a trip to nowhere? It's like the ultimate mystery novel, only, you're the protagonist in some crazy story. And as someone who's made some questionable life choices, like that time I dated my BFF's ex, or when I decided to take up interpretive dance class for singles, pressing this button seemed like a walk in the park. Easy peasy, bro. Or an easy ride in an elevator if we're being literal. So I did what any sane person with an insatiable curiosity and a questionable lack of sense, self-preservation would do. I pressed the button. I braced myself for a magical journey to Narnia, or at least a trip to the basement where all the missing socks and Tupperware lids go to party in liquor-induced raves, but lo and behold when the elevator door slid open with a ding, I was exactly where I started. Talk about anticlimactic, such a bummer. It's like opening a fortune cookie to find no fortune, or worse, a fortune that says, try again tomorrow, pal. Except now, after my elevator trip to nowhere, there's this aura of mystery about me, and I don't mean in a glowing studly way either. I think I've become the human equivalent of a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Because now when I ask for the time, it sounds like I'm foretelling doom, when the big hand meets the little hand in a dance of fleeting moments. My neighbor just wanted to know when to take his pizza out of the oven. I tried asking around for directions to nowhere, so I could reverse this change in me. Now, you'd think that'd be a pretty straightforward question. But I quickly realized I'd invited myself into a symposium of philosophical musing. It was like asking for directions in a town where everyone's a Zen master. The first person I asked was old Mrs. Jenkins from the fifth floor. She looked at me over her bifocals, knitting needles clicking away and said, To find nowhere, you must first lose somewhere. I blinked at her, wondering if she'd swapped her chamomile tea for something stronger, or perhaps she was smoking that wacky weed. Then, I asked Bob, the maintenance guy. He scratched his beard, screwed up his face and said, Nowhere ain't a place, it's a state of mind. I think he's been sniffing too much cleaning solution. Dude needs a break from it. My next attempt was with the yoga instructor from the seventh floor. She took a deep breath, centered herself and told me, Nowhere is everywhere and everywhere is nowhere. It's all about your perspective. I think she was still in her hippie zen mode from yoga class. Finally, I asked the building super, who just grumbled, directions to nowhere, buddy you're already there. I wasn't sure if he was being philosophical or just calling my life a dead end or just being a dick. The more I asked, the more confused I got. I felt like I was stuck in a loop, like a hamster in a wheel chasing the elusive nowhere. It was as if I had stumbled into an episode of Twilight Zone, one where Rod Serling forgot to write an ending. In the end, I found myself standing in front of the elevator again, staring at the To Nowhere button. I pressed it, the doors closed, and when they reopened I was back at square one. So, I got nowhere. So, here's the takeaway folks. If you ever find yourself asking for directions to nowhere, be prepared for a crash course in philosophy, a journey into the absurd, and a rendezvous with the surreal. And if you ever find yourself on that journey, remember this. You arrive the moment you stop seeking, or so they say. I guess I should have arrived by then. Now every time I try to make small talk it comes out as a riddle. It's like my tongue enrolled in a cryptology course without my brain's consent. You know I just wanted to ask about the weather but suddenly I'm asking, what's the color of wind on a sunny day? I mean is it blue? Is it transparent? Who knows? And don't even get me started on the Mondays. How's your Monday going? transforms into, how does the hamster of time spin its wheel in the house of the week? I've seen people break out in cold sweat trying to decipher that. I mean who needs coffee in the dispensary when you have existential dread served hot and fresh in life riddles, right? Then there's the time I asked my neighbor about his new car. Instead of, how's the ride? I blurted out, does the chariot of modernity soothe your journey on the highway of life? He just blinked at me, probably wondering if I'd been sniffing his car exhaust and it gets worse. I've become the building oracle. I'm like the Delphic oracle but instead of a temple I've got an elevator. People come to me with their mundane questions and I answer in riddles. Will it rain tomorrow? They ask. 
Does the sky weep or does it cleanse? I reply. I've got weather forecasters scratching their heads and reconsidering their career choices. One time a Karen asked me, will I find love? And all I could say was, is a heart not a lock not yet opened? I'm not sure if I'm the wisest person in the building or the most confusing, but one thing's for sure, small talk has never been this profound. And to think, all of this started with an elevator ride to nowhere. So, if you ever need to know the meaning of life or just want to know if it'll rain tomorrow, swing by. Just remember, I answer in riddles. So bring a decoder ring. And Karen, if you're listening, I still don't know about your cat's birthday party. I'm either enlightened or I've accidentally joined a cult of vagueness. That's right, folks, my elevator ride to nowhere has left me straddling the line between Buddha and the Riddler. I mean, I thought enlightenment was about finding inner peace, not sending people on a wild goose chase with my weather forecasts and other loony ramblings. But hey, maybe that's just my path to nirvana? Paved with confused faces and vague answers? The thing is, this enlightenment business isn't all it's cracked up to be. You might think it's all lotus positions and transcendental meditation. But let me tell you, buddy, it's more like paying rent in a New York penthouse. You know how they say ignorance is bliss? Well, enlightenment is expensive, and they don't take visa. Nope, my landlord, let's call him the universe, only accepts payment in deep thoughts. And let me tell you, deep thoughts don't grow on trees. They don't even grow on philosophers. I mean, imagine trying to come up with profound wisdom on the spot. It's like being in a high school debate team with Socrates as your opponent. To be or not to be, that is the question. Well, Shakespeare, the answer is to be broke. Because thinking deep thoughts is a full-time job and it doesn't come with a 401k. So here I am, stuck in this existential timeshare where the elevator music is my own inner monologue and the minibar only serves food for thought. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not all bad. I've got a great view of the abyss and the echo of my own confusion is a nice touch. But if you're thinking about taking the elevator to nowhere, let me give you some advice. Pack light, bring snacks, and maybe a book of riddles. And remember, the rent is due on the first of the month in the form of a profound realization about the nature of existence. And let me tell you, the rent in enlightenment is steep, and they only accept payment in deep thoughts. So here I am possibly stuck in nowhere speaking in riddles and still no closer to finding out where nowhere is. What? It's like I've been caught in a glitch in the matrix, only instead of dodging bullets, I'm dodging existential crises. I mean, when I embarked on this journey, I was hoping for a bit of adventure, maybe a secret floor full of treasures or at least a vending machine that doesn't eat my money. But no, I got a philosophy degree from the University of Nowhere. The other day I tried to order pizza. When they asked for my address, I said nowhere. There was a pause, and then they hung up. I mean, can you blame them? If I were them, I think I was being pranked by a wannabe philosopher too. Now you might be thinking, why not just stop pressing the nowhere button? Well, my friend, it's not that simple. You see, once you've tasted the sweet nectar of ambiguity, there's no going back. You start seeing the world in a different light, a light that's both enlightening and confusing, like trying to read a book with sunglasses on. And let's not forget the fame. The other day, I was invited to a talk show to discuss my journey to nowhere. The host asked, what's the secret to reaching nowhere? And I replied, the secret is not to find it, but to lose yourself. The audience clapped. I think they thought I was being deep, but honestly, I was just quoting a fortune cookie I had for lunch. So, if you're looking for a life-altering experience, a transition from a regular Joe to a cryptic sage, I've got just the thing for you. Hop on the elevator to nowhere. It's a journey like no other, one where the destination is as elusive as the concept of time during a Netflix binge. I've got an elevator that can help you achieve that, and possibly turn you into a slightly deranged oracle too. Share your own elevator to nowhere stories in the comments below.